Zvezda video, take two, Belgrade Boogaloo. Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan and welcome once again to Ball in Europe. And it's once again for me with this video because we tried to record it, about to upload it, and there was no sound. So this is our second take, so fingers crossed it'll be better than the first version was meant to be. We're here today to talk about Skrvena Zvezda, their roster for this coming EuroLeague season, what I like about it, what I may not be uh, happy with, and what I think is going to work and not work for them. So we're about to get to it, but beforehand, if you haven't already, please subscribe, that really, really does help. And of course, here we go. So we're going to begin with looking at who's come in. And by the way, with the net of in-out, I call it a net win for Zvezda. I think this is an improved roster on the overall. So the in, Cody Miller-McIntyre, Isaiah Canaan, Onion Dobrich, Mike Daum, Nikola Kalinic, and Uros Plausic. So obviously the backcourt is where I'm particularly happy there. Like Cody, phenomenal season for Basconia uh, last campaign. We're going to talk more about him in our next section. Isaiah, I've been a fan of him since his Murray State days, to be honest. So he's just a good player. I think we can actually see even more from him, though. Like he's always been good in EuroLeague. I just think he can be better. And I think even at this stage of his career, there is still room for growth. Uh, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, the front court changes, Dobrich, Daum, Kalinic, and Plavsic. Like, to me, they're a solid net upgrade in what's leaving, essentially. Uh, Kalinic, I, I'm a huge fan, obviously, but he's not the player he was in his prime. So, bear that in mind. He should be used more situationally so you can get the best out of him, essentially. Like, don't lean too heavily on him, and he will give you loads. So, that's who's in. Who's gone? Uh, to be honest, I'm largely really thinking this is actually just overall good moves. Nikola Topic, the exception, because he had he had to go. He was going to the NBA. That's obviously a loss. But Lazarevich, Mike Toby, Trey Tompkins, Freddie Gillespie, Adam Hanga, and Javante Smart. I look at them and I think there's not that much EuroLeague level, at least top tier EuroLeague level basketball left in those guys. Uh, I'm sure they would be offended at me saying that. Sorry, but I just mean for competing, for, for competing, for competing to make the postseason. I'm not sure that's the group you want uh, really there. So, yeah, on the whole, I, I'm really happy with the roster overhaul. When you look at who's come in to, to work at what's there and who's gone out and where they've gone. By and large, Zvezda should be happy with the summer. Like, it's definitely a net increase. Now, whether it's a net increase, that'll get them to the postseason. That'll be in our last section of the video. But for me, there's one particular partnership, and not necessarily an on-court one, that we need to talk about. So, Cody, Miller, McIntyre. I mean... Obviously, you're going to say nice things about your teammates and a new team you've joined, but you could tell this was genuine from Cody. Like, he flat out said that Milos Teodosic is going to be sick of all the questions he asks him because Cody Miller McIntyre, let's not forget, had a baller season, particularly as a creator for Basconia last year. Uh, extraordinary overall on assists, but of course, had that assist record for EuroLeague in a single game. And the guy was just good. Like, he was a brilliant creator. And he showed that he's a top-tier creator in EuroLeague. And now he's there with you folks in Belgrade, as Vesda fans. So, yeah, that's an enormous addition. But that he's willing to keep learning. Oh, if I'm a Zvezda fan, this is the happiest thing I could possibly have been told about Cody Miller-McIntyre. Like, I'd have been already happy he was going to be on my roster. And he's basically saying, Milos Teodosic is the dude I want to learn from. And now I get to work with him and learn from him. Like, we all know Milos is... You can contend the greatest passer that's ever lived. Certainly the most uh, uh, artistic passer that's ever lived. Uh, I think that one isn't in debate. Like, I'm sure some people will argue over best. Mm. I don't like goat debates at all, by the way. That's my biggest nuisance in uh, sports, not just basketball. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, you've got a phenomenal passer in Milos in the twilight of his career. Cody entering his peak years. And Cody saying... I don't see this guy as a rival for minutes. I see this guy as the mentor I need to be the best boss possible basketball player I can be. Like, I mean, that's just my eyes opening wide going, this is what I want to see. This is beautiful. This is wonderful basketball. Speaking of the actual basketball, there could be some tandem work with them this season. I don't think we'll see much of it. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of them being on the court too much together because they're both at their best when they're primary ball handler. So if you have them on together, one of them, or possibly both of them, is giving up some of that. And, you know, you don't want to have any of your player being less than the best version he can be when he's on the court. And they also, they go three guard. It could work, 
But honestly, there's only one ball to go around. And I think Isaiah Canaan fits more naturally into that uh, quasi are, are, you, are you a ball handler, are you a shooter version of, of the extra guy, basically, in a three guard setup. So I don't think we're going to see too much of them on the court. I think off the court, they're going to be the best. They're just going to get along. For Milos, it's great as well, because not only does he get to mentor a guy, but I'm sure Milos is considered potentially coaching after he's finished playing. And this is like, you know, he gets to practice what coaching is like before he goes, before he does it for real, like, you know. So, I mean, it's wonderful. Just all around, I love this. Uh, it should work brilliantly, and it should be a huge, huge plus to Zvezda. So now we're going to get to the tough part. What is it going to look like and what is it going to mean? So I'm not going to talk too much about the defensive impact. And the reason is the level of roster turnover. Uh, you might have seen my Partisan video, which is being linked up there right now. They obviously had enormous turnover. I think it's one player from last season's roster is there again. And obviously Zvezda fans love it when I talk about Partizan. So I'll leave that for a moment. Instead, I'll also point out to my Zalgiris video, which is also in one of those corners right now. And that again huge roster turnover and i don't think it has to have any particular beef with zalgiris and again i didn't really talk too much about the defensive side of the ball in that video either and the reason is i want to see what it actually looks like in the court before i start making real calls uh, defensively uh, but i love the distribution options as a whole so in addition to milos and cody you've got yago de santos You've got Isaiah Kanan, who mentioned already, and it's not like Nemanja, Nemanja Nedovic isn't exactly a, a good at passing. He's pretty pretty good passer. He's pretty good at distribution. I think you're going to be fine for distribution. What I'm worried about is consistent shooting from the front court. Like, there are several guys who can do a job. I mentioned Kalinich already, but again, I want you to be more situational with him. Uh, Rokas Giedaitris uh, is my guy, and that's for his ability to create shots, and by shots, I mean good shots, like good looks. From situations where it didn't look like there was any look. I remember when I first saw him playing a few years back, I was enjoying this like you know force of chaos where he'd be in this completely implausible situation and wouldn't just get the ball up. Like lots of bowlers will fight to get the ball up. That's great. He would find a way somehow to turn implausibility into a pretty good look and get the shot off and get it in the bucket more often than not. And that's pretty good. That's you know. Very good at basketball. And it's great, like when you can create shots that not just that like people like you and me aren't seeing being available, that but frankly the person you're playing against doesn't realize is there for him to create. That's important. But I think having your there's I don't I don't see a go-to person at the three, at the four, where you're saying, this is a person I'm trusting to put up X number of shots per game. Like, uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of ball sharing, a lot of ball movement. And that means that movement really is everything. Like, this is a roster built to create really good looks, and it's going to have to be as well, because, again, you look at this and you go, the backcourt, especially the ball handlers, the primary ball handlers, are going to have to do a lot of work here on that creative side. But that's to be expected in some degrees. So where do I see this all leaving Zvezda when it comes to essentially the end of the season, the bit you care about? And you're not asking me to talk about the ABBA League or the Adriatic League or the ABA or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you're not asking me to talk about the Serbian Cup and you're not asking me to talk about the Serbian League. You want me to talk about the EuroLeague situation. And uh, that's what I'm here for. So for me, there's three tiers in EuroLeague this season. There's five teams at the very top. Like, they're five. I think they aren't just guaranteed to be in the postseason. They're guaranteed to be in the playoffs. And that all four of the home court advantages will be from those five teams. Uh, there's three teams I have at the very bottom. They're not going to be relevant. But if you're in that middle group of ten, fighting out for what essentially are five spots, one automatic in the playoffs, four in the play-ins, every loss to a team in that bottom three is a bad, bad loss. Every win over a team in that top five is a huge bonus because it's all about being in the best place of that bunch of 10 to find the best way to get into discussion. Five of them are going in, five of them are not. Where do I put Zvezda? It is absolute coin flip territory for me. Right now, gun to the head, I have them on the outside. But we're talking a situation where one game or even tiebreakers could be in play here. It's that close for me for them right now. I think that they are, you know, in that discussion for like, you know, the 10th, 9th spot. I don't have them quite up there in the 8th, 7th. But I also think that right now I see them more likely to be 11th, 12th than 10th, 9th. 
But again, like this is when I say there's nothing. I mean, this middle bunch this season, it's going to be great for those, those of us who are neutrals, by the way. Uh, it's going to be great because we're just going to be following drama all year. Like you, the fans of actual teams involved in this, it's going to be hell because you won't know what way to look each week. Uh, you're going to be, you know, it's going to be fascinating fun, but it's also going to be very stressful. Like your hair is going to look like mine. You might be coming into the season with rich, luscious, I don't know, Nikola Kalinic great hair. Uh, and, you know, you might end up looking more like me by the end of it. And uh, that ain't great, uh, you know. But, yeah, listen, I think it's going to be close. I think as in the conversation, I think, you know, I get a lot of things wrong. And so who knows? But I think you'll be very close. If you haven't already, though, please subscribe. Uh, it really does help the channel. We do videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, getting this one out on Friday today was a challenge, but we got there. And uh, until Monday, I suppose, I will see you next time.